Welcome back to another episode of Myth Badger Videos. In this video, we're going to start a new series that deals specifically with VEX gears. And in exploring those VEX gears, we're going to look at not only how they're made, but how to use them and what are the values of each of the different types of gears. So for this first video, let's start by building a platform that we're going to use in subsequent videos. So one of the most important pieces you're going to need is wrenches and all VEX kits are going to come with wrenches. You may receive them handled or you may receive them as L keys. Um, it doesn't matter which one you have, they both have their purpose. Now when looking at the wrenches, there are two different sizes and if we can get a nice close up here, we see that we have a 5 64th and a 3 32nd. Both of these are going to be needed if you want to work with all of the equipment um, because they have different purposes. The 564th is actually a thinner hex wrench, um, and it is used a lot with things such as the locking collars, universal joints, and also machine screws, among a very few other minor purposes. The 332nd is used with pretty much all of our bolts. Now, if you use the L key version, the widths are the same, but this time the 564th is also usually going to be your larger one. Um, it is very rare to find one of these that's short, but you will occasionally see them. So the 564th is the larger, one, longer one. Because of years of use by students who seem to prefer the handled ones, many of mine are stripped and I haven't taken the time to repair them, so I'm going to set these aside. We're not going to really use them today. So let's go and look at how we're going to attach the metal. I have a base plate here, which is my large um, piece of metal. I have a wide channel bar, and I have two pieces of flat metal. I have a long one and a little bit shorter one. There's also some that come in a small square. Um, for what we're going to do today, we're going to look at using the longer one, um, just because we want it to match the length of that wide channel bar. So let's start by attaching these two pieces together. To do that, I'm going to need some standoffs, and since I'm using a larger piece, I'm actually going to get four standoffs here to help attach everything down, and I'm going to need a couple more of my screws to accommodate. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by taking my channel bar, and I'm going to hold a bolt, and I'm just going to place a bolt about right here, and I'm just going to take the standoff and just screw it on. The ends of the standoff on either side are threaded to fit the bolts. And these only, the threads only go so far, so longer bolts are not desired here. Short bolts will work just fine. Okay, And I'm going to set another one here. And actually, I'm going to offset by one and attach that here. What we're doing is we're just creating kind of a platform to attach everything. And now I'm going to go to the other end, and I'm going to place one here, and another one right here. And you know what? Just because we have a large piece of metal, let's go ahead and we'll do one more here, and we're going to place it right in the center just to help support the center of this as well. Okay? So... There we go, which means I'm going to need one more of my bolts for the other side. Let's see. Nope. Here we go. Now I can take this piece of plate metal, and I'm just going to set it on top. I'm just going to line everything up. And now I'm just going to start setting some of these bolts into place. And I'm just going to use my hand to twist them in. And we're going to twist them in just enough to get them attached. And then what we're going to do is tighten them down. Okay, so tighten down. And by tightening them down, I'm just going to um, help make sure they're holding the place. I don't want to over tighten. I just want to tighten enough that it's going to hold the piece without wiggling the metal around. And you can see when I'm done with this, why that center one is helpful because now I can't really push down on it because it is a thin metal. It is going to bend a little bit. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get the last piece 
we need to attach it to here. Okay, so I'm going to want to attach it. I'm going to attach it here, but I'm going to go one row in. I don't want to go into the um, the first row. I want to go to the next one just because it'll be easier to work with down below. So I'm just going to um, go in and put one screw in down here. I'm going to use my finger to hold it into place. Now, these kept nuts, we want these kept nuts. We do not want to use the nylock nuts, which the nylock nuts look a little different. They have this little piece of nylon, and there's no teeth, okay? Those are great for competition, but for just general classroom use, they are kind of annoying to work with. Now, I'm going to take this kept nut, and I'm just going to attach it here and just spin that into place. And I want a second bolt on the other end to help hold everything down, or else what will happen is the entire assembly is going to start spinning on us. Whoops. Okay, and then, just like before, I'm going to take this and I'm going to tighten. But when I tighten, I'm going to hold my finger on that kept nut. And you may have noticed that when I attached them, I put the teeth facing the metal, and I did that for a reason. When they're facing the metal, the teeth on this kept nut, which we see here, kind of splays out and gets a good grip on this metal. If I put it upside down and I put the teeth facing out, it'll work, but it's just harder to get out. Okay, so there's our main platform. We're going to use this platform for the rest of our builds. So. Thank you for watching. Feel free to hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with our VEX gear series or any other tutorials here at MythBadger Videos.